I have prepared a brief presentation on subject of deep fakes. It's one of the aspects or types of fake news phenomena, which is kind of new. And I think people in general are still not uh, aware of all the possibilities of this new technology and also the threats that we are facing already. So during this presentation, I will show you some a few clips, video clips, because uh, the subject is such that uh, visualization, I think, is best uh, for you to understand and to see some concrete clips on this complex topic. So let's start by defining it. Uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary, and I have to read it now defines that the term deep fake is typically used to refer to a video that has been edited using an algorithm to replace the person in the original video with someone else, especially a public figure, in a way that makes the video look authentic. I suppose you, you know about the definition. And we should also mention that uh, deep fakes first occurred on uh, on Reddit at the end of uh, 2017 by the user who had a nickname Deepfake. And uh, he also had a subreddit. And in this community, they basically created videos uh, that involved uh, pornographic content. That means swapping uh, celebrities' faces with, on the bodies of actresses in pornographic videos. Some other types they were producing where you've probably seen it, they've replaced Nicolas Cage, his head into some scenes of movies, famous movies and famous, and famous movie clips. So we have to know that uh, today uh, the predominant use of deepfakes is still for pornography. In June this year, uh, one big research showed that uh, almost 90% of deepfakes are pornographic context and uh, nearly half, half percent of those are cases of women. So don't be afraid, I will not show you any porn videos in this presentation. Uh, I have another definition here which says that the term deep fake refers to a video where artificial intelligence and deep learning and algorith algorithmic learning method used to train computers has been used to make a person appear to say something they have not. So just to maybe be a bit technical, even if I'm far from it, uh, we can say that uh, at the heart of deep fake is a form of deep learning known as generative adversarial networks. So the thing is, uh, it's the concept is that uh, two neural networks uh, work against each each other in order to create realistic video, uh, audio clip, photograph, and similar. So the generator, the creative part, is fed with data, pictures, audio, and uh, images, and asked that it generates the same face artificially. The discriminator, on the other hand, it receives the generator's data and gives it back if it's not accurate or it needs some improvement. So basically, it's the process of back and forth, which continues until the generator produces something that is almost in indistinguishable from reality. I think that's on this basic level quite understandable. Uh, this, I don't know, this is a web page. We can look at it just as illustration. It's called this person does not exist. So every time you enter this page, as you will see now, the page generates artificial faces. All of these persons you are seeing now on the screen are not real. They are generated from many, many pictures of other humans. And the page its algorithms are producing faces of people who don't really exist. This might look as 
we stumbled to, I don't know, human resources base of some big company, but it's not. All the faces are completely fake. They also have on this page uh, pictures of uh, cats, photographs of cats, horses and other stuff. So I don't know what you think, but it's kind of creepy, no? Uh, the other slide, oops, I have, it's a story about uh, Oliver Taylor persona as the Reuters report delivered in a story in July and it was about uh, a person who on his uh, social media profiles described himself as a coffee lover, raised in traditional Jewish family, like a normal person who graduated and stuff. And uh, that person at the end of uh, last year started writing posts for some famous newspapers like Jerusalem Post and Times of Israel. And uh, the story came out in public when he attacked in his writings, he started attacking some activists with whose opinion he, he wasn't, uh, he was uh, not agreeing with other people. So when uh, newspapers and writers uh, starting investigated him, it turned out that the guy is fictional. He didn't exist. No record of him was on his university. He had only online presence and uh, when his picture on social media profiles was analyzed, experts in deceptive imagery used very good and modern forensic analysis programs to determine that his profile photo is hyperrealistic forgery or a deep fake. So it turns out later that uh, nobody tried to contact him on some concrete basis, the guy never asked uh, to be paid for his work, which was very strange. I mean, that would be kind of strange to me at the first. And uh, Reuters concluded the story and it's really, really nicely put. The Taylor persona is rare in the wild example of a phenomenon that has emerged as a key anxiety of the digital age, the marriage of deep fakes and disinformation. The other thing I've prepared is a short clip from the Back to the Future movie, just as an illustration of great possibilities this new technology has. And it's a clip from the movie. You will now see, I think we'll have some commercials, unfortunately. Yeah, excuse me for that. So it is a clip from the famous scene when uh, Marty's mother falls in love in, in him with him. And the faces of uh, original actors, Michael J. Fox and uh, Christopher Fox are replaced with Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. So take a look. So that's not Michael J. Fox, right? And it's not original actor. That's Robert Downey Jr. So quite fascinating, right? If you never saw the original movie, you wouldn't be able to distinguish that these were not original actors. Oops. 
Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, deep fake was made by the YouTube user with some strange name and it was up for like six months now. It was viewed more than 10 million times. And to move uh, to more serious examples, uh, this video clip I'm about to show you, I suppose you've, most of you have at least heard of it. It's a manipulated Nancy Pelosi video, the House Speaker, which was shared by President Trump on Twitter and his peers on Facebook, where it achieved, uh, where it was viewed more than two million, two and a half million times in a very short period. So let's look at this short video called Altered Reality. And it was released by CBS. You are seeing the video, yes? No, oh, too bad. Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. <sighs> it says that it is screen sharing, so. So you're not seeing video at all? Ah, uh, that's a problem. I'm sorry for that. We should have, I should have. So we'll have to, that's really too bad. So maybe I can uh, then tell you in brief what, what's, it, what's it about. So it was about uh, one speech that Nancy Pelosi made, which was filmed, and this fake video, manipulated one, had uh, the frames were just slowed down for 25%. So that made her speak and move slower, which turned out, uh, which seemed like she was drunk or something, or maybe sick or whatever. So it, uh, it's a good example what the video manipulation uh, can can, is capable of achieving. And this altered video uh, circulated various social media channels uh, and it was uh, definitely attempt of right wing to discredit and embarrass her. And I'm so sorry that uh, you, you're not able to look at this video. So you didn't see the Back to the Future video as well, right? The previous video you didn't see also. Oh. Well, too bad because I have another one prepared, but I'll have to describe it then. I'm so sorry. I, I should have put it in presentation, but uh, yeah. I don't know why it doesn't want to share the screen, the YouTube screen. Okay, here I've just, uh, I just have uh, two punchlines from two recent uh, reports. Uh, this one, first one is, uh, from August, uh, from University College of London, which uh, claimed that claims that deepfakes are the most dangerous form of crime through artificial intelligence. The other one from last year is was a survey from more than of more than one thousand public relation professionals in the United States. Uh, usually, I mean PR professionals and they said last year that fake news is considered a serious problem for almost 60% of them. 
with emphasis on the fake technology in voice or visual form, which is considered to be among the top four challenges that companies working in PR sector will have to face in this year. Uh, on this, I can only say that uh, I partly disagree with this conclusion because I think uh, I'm certain that this deepfake technology presents a uh, danger for all companies, regardless of their niche, not uh, just the PR sector, as I'm hoping, I'm sorry to say, we'll, I think we will see in a really recent future. Uh, the next slide is about a report of, uh, it was just published two, two weeks ago, it's a report from uh, Croatian Security and Intelligence Agency, which uh, recognized on two pages from Thursday published uh, deep fakes as a serious threat to national security. I will read now the, the part, the important part which says discussions are already underway on a way to prevent the misuse of deepfake videos and of and one of the tasks tasks of state security systems will be to find the ways to recognize deepfake videos and prevent their negative impact on democratic and security process so it was really kind of a surprise for me you know the security agents those are those big guys with muscles with big heads and stuff so, on the other hand, I'm glad they're to, trying to do something they, to keep up to date and they're getting some work done. That's definitely positive. Uh, the main point of this report was that the misuse of this technology poses a growing threat to privacy and national security and the proliferation of deepfake works can have a devastating effect on divisions in society and undermine citizen trust in state institutions and media. So those are also things, or to say effects, that fake news and disinformation are in general doing, undermining citizen trust and polarizing nations. To move on, uh, this report uh, inspired me kind of to look at Google Trends about uh, how deep fake turn deep fakes how is it Googled in Croatia and in the world? And I have to say I wasn't disappointed. So on this first slide, we have deep fake in Croatia. You can see it because it's uh, kind of small, but uh, in Croatia, it was first time discovered, beginning to being Googled, the term in January 2018 with a spike in the middle of the graph, which was in uh, August 2019. And this last big spike, the biggest one on the end of the graph, is just two weeks ago when this report was issued. So we can conclude that uh, people are showing greater and greater interest in the term and still are not very familiar with the meaning of the word and the concept which it represents. This is also from the report which says that one way to abuse this technology may be to create fake videos and audio recordings to influence democratic electoral, electoral processes, financial economic processes, general societal attitudes on current topics, decision-making processes during crisis or causing panic and unrest in society. So that's quite a, quite a broad field that we can see that deep fake, deep fake technology can affect in nations and countries. Uh, the other trend is uh, from the world. On the other hand, when we see those frequency results, we can see that you cannot see, but I will tell you. First one can be seen in October 1970 when deepfakes started to emerge, as we said before, and they've peaked in February 1918. That's the first big peak on the graph. And as you can see, since then to today, uh, the term has a growing interest in general public and more and more people are inquiring about deepfakes in general. 
the other interesting thing I've noticed is that the term is mostly Googled in the eastern part of the world. So down you'll see it's like in countries like South Korea, China, Hong Kong, and Singapore. And that is interesting enough we could uh, maybe come to conclusion that uh, they are, as they are much more technologically advanced, they've uh, also, they've probably had much more problems or some kind of bigger issues with the technology. And that's why the term is more popular in the Eastern part of the world. Uh, I think, yeah, this is another slide, which is, uh, which then, which I will not play them because you will not able to see it. Uh, this is a kind of art project, which is called the in, in the event of moon disaster. And I will have to read it again. It says that the project explores the, inf the influence and pervasiveness of misinformation and deepfake technologies in our contemporary society. So if you have time later, just Google it in event of moon disaster. And the guys in this uh, video, it's a whole movie, which is about, I think, half an hour long. They've manipulated uh, using deep learning techniques, manipulated, uh, created synthetic voice of President Nixon. And uh, they use dialogue replication techniques. And on the video, he delivered a speech uh, in the case that uh, astronauts went on the moon and died. So it's really a good example of uh, how deep fake technology can alternate history. History video. And just for the end, maybe some closing remarks. Uh, for me, I think the, one of the biggest challenges is for us is young people who we know they consume media on mostly in the form of videos, YouTube and stuff, and can easily be misguided due to lack of their experience. Uh, the other good thing uh, maybe I saw recently is that Microsoft rece recently announced the launch of Microsoft Video Authenticator which is a tool designed to spot with widows will have been manipulating using deep fake technology. Here, maybe a question arises, uh, deep fakes are a product of artificial intelligence, right? So how can artificial intelligence check the same content made by artificial intelligence? Maybe they've come to some new solutions. And for conclusion, we can now, from what we've seen, definitely agree that uh, deep fake technology has frightening possibilities, especially when used in political arena for political conflicts and discriminations and such stuff. We can also say that new technologies can bend, redirect, and make the truth around us unclear, as well as alter history. I strongly recommend that you watch this moon, moon video. And the last, the deep fake videos that manipulate reality are becoming more sophisticated and realistic as a result of advantages in technology and artificial intelligence, creating a potential for new kinds of misinformation with devastating consequences. So that's about it for me. Thank you for your attention. 